Welcome to our lecture online. So now we've seen that when we divide one polynomial by another, sometimes we have no remainder and sometimes we do have a remainder. And we can't always tell by looking at it. So how do we determine what the remainder is? Well, we have what we call the remainder theorem, which says that we have, if we have a polynomial uh, of the variable x and we divide it by x minus some constant, then the remainder will be equal to the polynomial evaluated for x equal the value of that constant. So let's try to make some sense out of that statement. That may make sense to a mathematician, but doesn't make sense to us. Well, here I have a nice example to show you how that works. Let's say we have one polynomial divided by x minus some constant. In this case, the constant is 2. Wow, that looks familiar. That's the one we did in the last video, and we saw that the result of that would be 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 plus the remainder of 5 over the divisor x minus 2. So that tells us that if we have a polynomial divided by something that looks like this, where a is just a constant, then we can find the remainder by simply evaluating our polynomial for the value x equals that constant, which in this case that constant is 2. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our polynomial in the numerator and plug in 2 for every x. So this is 3 times 2 to the third power minus 8 times 2 to the second power plus 8 times 2 minus 3. And of course, we know that our remainder is 5. Let's see if that does indeed equal to 5. So this would be equal to 3 times 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 8 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus 8 times 2 minus 3. So this is equal to 24 minus 32, plus 16 minus 3. We have 24 plus 16, which is 40, minus 32, which is 8, 8 minus 3, which is equal to 5. And notice, we get the exact remainder that we were expecting, the number 5, but this is a very easy method to figure out if it does indeed have a remainder, yes or no. It's also an easy way to find out that if the remainder is equal to zero, then we know that the denominator perfectly fits into the denominator, and we can then divide the denominator by the denominator and have no remainder if that number ends up being equal to zero. And that is how it's done, and that's what we mean by the remainder theorem.